my kitchen. Today's episode, we're going to talk about grains and baking bread. And I'll do um, just a, a quick go over of all the different grains that I have available and what I do with them. This um, group right here is high gluten. This group is low gluten. And this group is the zero gluten. And over here, you have the two main uh, wheats that we're used to in our nation, uh, white wheat, hard white wheat, and hard red wheat. Most products on the shelf at the grocery store are made with hard red wheat. And uh, the white wheat is a little bit of a deviation. It has been, I'm sure bread, if that's the term I can use, to be a little bit lighter and fluffier when you make bread. These two back here, this is kamut and this is spelt. These are considered ancient grains. Um, spelt is specifically mentioned in the Bible. Um, kamut is thought to be about 6,000 years old and the ancient Egyptian word uh, kamut is, actually means wheat. So this is thought to be the wheat mentioned in the Bible or something very, very similar where these are later developments and this is what we're used to here. Um, I personally like kamut the flavor the best. It does make a heavier, denser loaf if you just use kamut, so I do mix my grains to get the lightest loaf. Um, I like to use spelt a little bit in my, um, my baked goods. Uh, not so much in my bread, but I might use a cup um, just because I like using different grains. I like really like using spelt to make um, pie crusts. That's my favorite way to use spelt. And I have a grinder, and this is my grinder, and I just dump my wheat in the top and it's really loud, kind of like a jet engine. And I just thought I would dump some in there just to show you. Um, you can uh, go to Squirrel Creek here in, um, it's south of Akron, and buy grain through them and they will grind it fresh for you. Fresh is always best, because typically if you buy, um, it says whole wheat in the little sacks at the grocery store. It's number one, it's probably rancid because as soon as you grind the wheat, then the oils are exposed. So it's always good to, to know that it's fresh. And also, um, the companies might add some preservatives to it. So if you want preservative-free, fresh grain, then the best, your best bet is to, event, to buy this yourself or something like it. There's many, many different kinds on the market, some more expensive, some less expensive. This is probably a Midler, but this is my second one in about 12 years. And my first one was a, a lesser expensive one and I had to grind all my grain twice. So it took us almost all Saturday to grind all the grain we need to grind. And where this, it takes me about less than two hours to grind everything we grind that we use for our family. So I'm just gonna show you what it sounds like. It's pretty loud, um, but this would be a home use one. You just dump it in the top here and you have to read about where your fixtures need to be, but this is, I know where they need to be because I read it. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the motor right now. It's gonna be a little loud. off. It's pretty safe and see it's disappearing into the hopper. This top part is called the hopper. Okay, so I'll turn it off. Just push it down. This, I did, I um, would give this a fine grind and so when you just turn it a little bit it's going to be a more fine grind and the finer your grind is the lighter your loaves are going to be. Uh, coarser grind would be more like porridges or some people like very coarse, very dense bread but I, I tend to like mine lighter. And so then you just pull this part out here and then I'll just show you and then just open it up. This is the little filter and this is where the grain comes in or the wheat after it's and then it turns into a flour and it's kind of messy. See that? And so this is uh, which one did I pour in? Oh, this is spelt. So spelt has a different color. Um, if I would grind the white wheat or the red wheat, they all have slightly different colors. And the more you get used to it, you can identify it um, probably without somebody telling you, telling you what it is. So I'll just put this back. Okay. Um, okay, so we went over these. Now we're going to go over the, the low gluten. Right here is oat groats. And everybody knows in America what oatmeal is. It's the lowering cholesterol food to eat. If you have higher cholesterol, you want to consume oatmeal. Um, my family doesn't really like oatmeal, so I have to trick them. There's just a couple people in my family that like oatmeal. My husband does, and I think one or maybe two of my children do. The rest of them don't. So I have to use oatmeal. Um, I grind it up 
and I put it in all of my baked goods. I even put it in my yeast breads, but again, um, I'm not sure if I told you, if you're going to use any of these other grains ground up in your yeast breads, the ratio is one quarter or one to four. So let's just say you have one cup you can uh, replace a quarter of the one cup. I guess that would be one to three. That ratio would be one to three. So you could replace up to one quarter, not over that, because then the gluten, there's not going to be enough gluten to um, uh, cause the structure to hold the yeast bubbles that would make it rise. So you want enough gluten if you're going to make the yeast breads. Okay, so oat groats and oatmeal. Oatmeal, quick way to grind it up if you're going to add it to like cookies or maybe your kids are like mine. If they see these little flakes in their food, they're freaking out, they won't eat it. So I'm gonna walk over here, maybe um, you can follow me, and I'm gonna dump it in my um, blender and I'm just gonna flip it on. I don't even have to put the lid on it, watch this. And so that makes a really nice little flour. And I'll come back over here. And it makes a nice little flour. And then so you can put it in your banana bread. You can put it in zucchini bread or any of your cookies. And it acts just like flour. And it, um, my kids never know. So I'll just leave that there. Okay, um, I have not tried putting oat groats in my blender. It's soft enough. I think it would probably do a fairly good job, but I would definitely probably put my oat groats in this grinder here. Okay, this is soft white wheat. It's a hybrid, um, somewhat, if that's the right word, of the hard white wheat. It has less protein in it and much less gluten. So this is very appropriate to grind up and then use for any of your pastries or your baked goods. Um, my children love pancakes and waffles and we love um, scones and cookies. And so I use, this is probably the, one of my main, these two would be two of my main um, flours that I use for those things. Okay, this is buckwheat. These both actually are buckwheat. This is unhulled and this is hulled buckwheat. I typically just use buckwheat for sprouting and um, this, you can plant this just like in trays, like you're going to plant lettuce seeds and it grows into a buckwheat lettuce and so it's really good to add to salads. So that's what that is for. But this is, I sprout this and after about three days, um, it gets a nice little tail on it and then of course all the nutrients burst, um, the nutrient uh, levels I think just double or triple whenever you sprout anything and and then I have a dehydrator that I dehydrate it and I make kind of what's considered a raw uh, granola with um, sprouted buckwheat and it's really good and maybe in later episodes we'll go into that but that's a lot of fun. Um, this is barley. Barley again is an ancient grain. It's mentioned uh, in the Bible in John 6 I think Jesus turned uh, the few barley loaves enough to feed you know the crowd 5,000 so barley is we're familiar with barley in those stories but not so much here in our nation do we consume barley but it is a very very ancient grain um, Ruth followed Boaz in the Old Testament story and and she um, gleaned the barley fields so um, it's probably more considered maybe a Middle Eastern uh, grain but barley is highly highly nutritious it's a I think what we're familiar with here, it would be whole barley, or no, excuse me, pearled barley. And pearled barley would be nutritionally the same as white rice. So it's got, if it's pearled, that means it's highly processed. All its outer good stuff has been taken off. Um, it has a good flavor, it has a great flavor, and we like it in our soups. But again, it's, it's very nutritionally, mo mostly void. We just mostly have it for the taste and not for the nutrition. So if you're going for nutrition, you want the, the real thing. And again, I order this through my food co-op. Um, the only place I know of locally where you can get it would be Squirrel Creek, which is, um, I think, south of Akron. And you can go there. I think I mentioned that. And they'll grind your grains for you and, and everything at um, very, pretty affordable prices. This is rye. Um, I don't like rye, but I think it's because I don't like caraway, um, which is the, the spice or the herb that is added to the rye bread that we're familiar with here. And some people love it. My mother-in-law loves rye toast and tea. And I've tried rye toast and I don't like it at all. But it's because I don't like caraway. 
So I have learned that. So I actually use rye because it is nutritious and it's good to use different grains so you don't develop a sensitivity. If you just use one grain all the time, sometimes your bodies can develop a sensitivity. So it's good to switch up your grains or mix up your proportions. And um, this is grown mostly in colder climates uh, and it's a staple in Russia. I do know that in Scandinavia, just those colder climates because it grows very well there. And so we don't grow it too much here, um, but we do have it available, of course. And then over here, um, the zero, everybody's familiar with popcorn. Now this is popcorn. There's so many different kinds of corn. I just got the popcorn, blue corn and red corn and I don't know, corn, corn, corn. Um, we're, we're definitely, you know, corn saturated here in the United States. Corn has a very low protein and for those countries that have to rely on corn as their staple food, um, they have, they get a disease called like kwashi, kashi, something, I don't know, but it's this horrible disease that the children get and then they can't walk and their legs, they just don't, um, develop properly and but we don't worry about that here because we have enough other high protein grains and enough protein in our diet that that, that doesn't affect us but you wouldn't want to have a corn only diet because that would not be healthy but i love popcorn i love corn i love to add cornmeal at least one cup and i will today to my um yeast spreads because it just gives a really good crunch and uh i enjoy it my kids we love popcorn it's kind of like our love food we just love it um, okay this is flax seed so it's not necessarily a grain it is a seed it's high in omega-3 fatty acids um, so many other things it's just very rich in nutrients and I tend to put it in everything that would have flour in it I just add it and of course the ratio would be small you don't add too much um, I'm not one to really measure so I do a coffee um, grinders worth <laughs> in my batch so you'll see that here in a minute um, what I do but if I was going to add it it's also great to add in the place of eggs if you're allergic to eggs you can grind up flaxseed and you do one tablespoon of ground up flaxseed to two tablespoons or maybe even three, depending on how you like your consistency. It becomes very mucilaginous, almost like an egg white consistency once it um, sets in with the water. And so you can replace eggs and baked goods, and we'll do that in future episodes too, and I'll show you how to get eggs out if you need to. Um, this is brown rice. This is long grain brown rice. It is most like the white rice that most of us are used to. Um, it's an excellent transition to get out the white rice, the pearled barley, the white flour, and bring in the whole grains just because you're going to have wholeness. And that's what we want. We want whole nutrition. We don't want just bits and pieces or things added back in that are synthetic or that our bodies can't assimilate because that's pretty much useless to us. It might look good on paper, but it doesn't help us nutritionally. And so brown rice, the, the long grain would be, I think, most like the white rice. It's not as sticky. There's, there's um, short grain. There's... Um, medium grain um, and then there's long grain and of course then you have wild rice and sticky rice so there's all kinds of different kinds but this is our family's favorite I grind this up too um, it's, I've had so many babies we have 10 children so um, uh, it makes a great porridge for a baby transitioning you know around six months when you need to add cereals back in it makes a wonderful porridge and pretty much the ratio to making a good porridge for a baby you might want to water it down, but it would be um, one, one to four. So like, you know, one tablespoon to four tablespoons of water. And you can bring that to a boil and whisk it and then just let it sit, put the lid on, just let it sit cool to whatever temperature you need. And it's perfect food for a baby. Um, this is amaranth and I'm going to be honest with you, I've never used it in my life. <laughs> I bought it like a year ago thinking, I'm gonna use this. Um, it's a food of the Aztecs, a staple grain for the Aztecs. So it's an ancient grain. Um, it's really a seed, but uh, it, is high, it is nutritious. Um, that's all I know about it. So we'll just move on. Moving on to millet. Um, I love millet. Millet is, have you ever heard of the Hunzas of India? They have been studied for their health and longevity gosh, for years and years. And the Hunzas have been known to live to be 120 with vibrant health and beyond. And um, millet is their staple grain. And we know it here as bird seed. So <laughs> we don't really consume it or maybe animal feed or something, which is a shame because it has 
it's outstanding nutritionally. I personally like it. I think when I first started consuming millet, I made it into like a porridge. You can cook it up like you would cook up rice. You can do it like that and it would be kind of fluffy and you fluff it with a fork. I like it best to grind it and this grinds great um, in a mill. It also will grind in a blender just like you saw me do with the oatmeal. It grinds down pretty nice. You can even probably put it in a coffee grinder. I haven't tried that because that, you know, I have my grinder. I don't really need to, but um, I was trying to think where you could buy this locally. I don't even know if Squirrel Creek sells it. Um, so you might have to get it online or you could buy it maybe in the feed stores for like birdseed, but it probably has other chunks of stuff in there. So I wouldn't recommend that. So look for it. I think it's worth your while to get it. Um, I'll just read a little story in here she tells about it that I really, it's a, it's a funny, interesting story. Um, Okay, millet is a gluten-free grain and almost no one is allergic to it. With an excellent balance of amino acids, millet is one of the best quality proteins available. It has more iron and vitamins than any other cereal and is very easy to digest. The following World War II story concerning millet was recounted from China's Millions, a missionary publication. So here's the quote. When the Japanese occupied Shangzi, where Miss Lundgren and Miss Bachman were stationed, the ladies were cut off from all supplies and lived for four months on a diet of millet porridge three times a day. Miss Bachman's health, she had been suffering from digestive trouble, greatly improved. It is interesting to hear that an American mission doctor in Peking has discovered the virtues of millet porridge for digestive trouble and now gives it a regular place on her own menu and feeds her friends on it too. So, um, I just thought that was interesting little side note there about millet. So hopefully you will add that to your diet too. This lastly is quinoa. Um, I have a very interesting relationship with quinoa. It is considered a superfood by many who study those things. Um, it was, it's a food of the Andes, so more South American. It is um, highly, highly nutritious. I just do not like the flavor. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like. I have a picture um, of it. Uh, this is in one of my, my cookbooks. I love this cookbook. This is where the mom hides all the like veggies and stuff, you know, in, in the foods. It's a great cookbook. But this is how it looks when it's cooked up. It's kind of got a little white curly cue that might freak people out once it's cooked up. You can, you really can't see it, but I know when I first cooked it up, I thought, are there worms in it? <laughs> so maybe that was my aversion to it. Just look like there's worms in it. There's not. That's just how the grain cooks up. And it cooks up maybe similar to how you would do rice or millet and the proportions would be in any cookbook. Um, quinoa is an expensive grain. Like a little tiny bit is going to be $12. It's just crazy expensive. And um, so it's really not affordable for our family. Um, I do have it. I did buy it thinking, oh, it's a superfood, high nutrition. We're going to start eating it. And I made it all. I was going to make this little porridge thing. And don't like it. Not very much. So I might just grind it up and add it to... Um, I don't know, baked goods or maybe yeast spread in the correct proportion, of course. Okay, so there you have it. Now I'm going to put all this stuff away and I'm going to turn to making bread. And so you can just follow me. Thank you.